This is my test setup for testing the Evans races. Here's an empty cabinet. Components that go inside of it include the relay board, which is hiding behind the works. Here's the works, the thing that makes the horses move, including the motor and the bellows. And then finally, the head box, which shows the results of the race once it's been completed. It all fits into that original cabinet with the relay board on the bottom, the works next, and then the head unit on top. This is the head box. It shows a bunch of information. First of all, in the center is the odds wheel, odds drum. It shows the payout for the particular horse. For example, if horse number seven won, then you'd get paid five to one odds or five nickels. To the left of that, where it says spy song and assault, those light up when the actual horse wins and shows you who the winner is. And to the right is the sweepstakes winner. If the sweepstakes winner wins, it matches the horse that won, then you get paid an extra sweepstakes. This is the clear window where the magic eye displays the number of free play credits that you have. Here's the magic eye. It keeps track of the number of credits that you have when you're doing free play. Next is the odds drum, which determines the number of credits you win if your horse comes in first. Here's the mechanism that moves the horses forward, including the player piano roll, the lower left, the track and top part of the picture, and a relay bank on the right-hand side, which records the number of horse that you've bet upon. This is the logic board. It has the payout tubes at the top, a payout score reel at the top right, which, deter which helps drive that payout tube. The tilted box is a pinball machine, which helps randomize the game. And the two score reels at the bottom help determine the number of credits that you've bet and the sweepstakes winner in case you happen to win big. Most of that logic is for the free play mode. I'm simulating a coin drop by connecting two contacts together and now I'm going to press the start switch. Game will start and the horses will start to move. First the reset bar retracts allowing the horses space to move and now the number one horse will trip three wires. You see the flasher turning in the lower left hand corner. This varies the sweepstakes winner. You'll also see the pinball kicking which causes the odds drum to rotate. The horses continue to run and the number one horse will trip three switches. The last switch will stop the sweepstakes from flashing and now it's being reset back to the beginning. While the horses are racing before the number one horse reaches the third switch, you'll see the sweep state splashing, and every time the pinball kicks, you'll see the rotating drum determine a new set of odds. Once the winner is found, it'll light up a light in the upper right hand corner. In the lower right is the winner selection unit. It rotates every time the pinball machine gets hit. Once it selects a winning horse, the star wheel in the upper right, which is attached to the paper roll, pulses the winning horse. You can see the bank of relays in the upper left. One of them is getting pulsed, giving additional pulses to the winning horse. Here we see the results of the race. Horse number five has won the race, pays 30 to 1 odds, and it also happens to be the sweepstakes winner. You can see that it's a sweepstakes winner because it shows the same number fives lit up on the right hand side. Now we'll see what it looks like when it gets paid out. Two coin tubes, the one on the left slices off individual nickels, the one on the right will dump a full tray of nickels when you win a sweepstakes. The score reel in the bottom right will slice off individual, in this case paying off 30 nickels, and then it also shows a sweepstakes win as the right coin tube is also dumped. The game is set to pay out. Now we're going to move the jumper, and the game will keep track of credits, but it will no longer pay out. It's called free play mode. First we'll turn the magic eye wheel. This will effectively add credits to the game. Notice that the light comes on. Now that I have some credits, I can place a bet. Here I'm betting on horse number five. Every time you bet, the wheel turns one notch. That basically decrements the free play counter, the magic eye over on the side. You'll see it rotate down one credit as it reduces it by one. Now I'll get ready and press the start button. This will cause the horses to race. Should I win anything, then the magic eye will increment by whatever the odds wheel dictates for the winning horse. Here you see number horse number six pulling ahead. It was selected by the winner selection unit and got extra pulses, causing it to go out to the front. 
Once a player has decided that he's finished and he's got a bunch of winnings in the magic eye, these credits can be taken off the machine by the operator by clicking a switch on the side of the cabinet, which causes the counter, the magic eye, to decrement back down to zero. And now the game's ready for the next player. This completes the explanation about how the various components of the Evans races works. Show a couple more races. In the first race, the player piano roll will reach the end and it'll reverse. You'll see the gears change direction. You'll also notice that the red horse jumps ahead because it was selected by the winner selection unit. In the second race, the white horse will be selected and will jump ahead. Notice that the odds drum spins twice. First when the reset bar goes back to the beginning and not the second time when the number one horse reaches the second switch. There are two other videos. One shows the mechanism in detail and a video that will come along shortly that shows the game at actual play once it's completed.